Okay, lads, so we're on the chapter of conic sections, the ellipse, and we are over here on page 196, and we're looking at the tennis racket. So question three, a tennis racket is shown below. It is based on an ellipse with tangents drawn from points P and Q. Reproduce the diagram to the dimensions given. Add an extra design detail to the drawing. Okay, so we have an ellipse that is given here. And we have two tangents. And we have the handle of the racket here as well. Okay, so what we need to find out is how to draw this ellipse, how to locate P and Q, how to draw these tangents, and then finish off by drawing the handle of this racket. So we're given a major axis of 90 mil, or a minor axis, excuse me, of 90 mil, and we're given half a major axis as being 65 mil. So we know that the other half is going to be 65 here as well. So 65 and 65 is going to give us 130 major axis and a minor axis of 90. So we're going to try to set that up in the middle of our worksheet. So to find the middle of the worksheet, we are going to measure down from our border 130 millimeters. And I'm just going to draw a construction line through the center of my page. From the border, I'm going to measure in 210 millimeters. And I'm going to draw a line perpendicular through that point. Okay, so that now has found me the center of my page. I know that the major axis is 130. So 130 divided by 2, which is given as being 65. Okay, so that's 65 mil to the right of this center line. I also know that the minor axis altogether is 90 mil. So if I divide that by 2 to get a radius of that circle, it's going to be 45. So from the center point, I've measured to the right 45, and I've measured to the right 65. And from there, I'm going to draw two circles. So I'm going to draw this ellipse using the concentric circles method. first circle of radius 45 and this is my second circle of radius 65. Now already I've found four points of my ellipse. I found the highest point, the lowest point, the point furthest to the left and the point furthest to the right. I'm going to label them points 1, 2, 3, and 4. The labeling of points is called indexing, and it's very important that we're labeling our points as we go. The next thing we're going to do is divide this circle up into 12 equal parts. These parts are going to be called sectors. Already we have four quadrants and we'll be dividing each quarter into three equal sectors. To do this we'll be using our 30 60 set square. So drawing a line at 30 degrees through the center point in this direction and 30 degrees in the other direction. We're then dividing that circle up with the 60 degree line. So 
So using the 60 degree edge of our set square. And 60 degrees in the opposite direction. So what I've done is I've divided that circle up using my 3060 set square, which is why we call it dividing the circle using the 3060 method. With my blue wire up, I'm going to mark all the points where these lines cut the major circle, this one on the outside. So that's going to cut it here at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 points. Okay, so it's cut the major at 8 points, and it's also cut the minor at 8 points as well. So if I follow this point in, I see where it cuts the minor. Cuts the minor, cuts the minor, 7 and 8. So those are the points that it cuts the minor. Now, next step is to go to all the points where it cuts the major and drop them vertically down towards this center line here. So we're dropping it down here towards the major axis and the line that continues out to the right, continues out to the left, this major axis here. We're dropping them points down. The four on the top are being dropped down. The four on the bottom are being brought up towards it. So to show you what we're doing here, get my set square, go to the point and dropping that vertically down. And if we've been accurate with our measurements, that should be on the same point as the one below it that we're going to bring in up. So I'll drop this point down and bring this point up. And again, if we're accurate with how we divided it using the 3060 method, these two should be in line as well. So bringing that up and dropping this down. We're skipping this center line because we've already found our two points, number two and four, on this line. So the extreme low point and the extreme high point is two and four. So we're going to move to this next one. And again, if we've been ac accurate, we can just do both at the same time. And the last two. And then the extreme point to the right here is number three. And the extreme point to the left is number one. So that's great. We've sent all these points up. I've sent all these points down. The next step for us is everything on this left-hand side or um, smaller circle, so the minor axis circle, are going to be sent to the left. So this point sent to the left, 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 and everything to the right, you could nearly guess it, is going to be sent to the right. One, two, three, four, sent over here to the right. So I'm going to start with this point and send that out to the right. And again, if you've been accurate, this one should be sent out to the right as well. So we should be able to do two at the same time if you've been accurate with your division of the circle. Okay, and what that's done now is found us eight more points on the ellipse. So if I follow this line in and this line down, where they cut, gives me a point in my ellipse, down and across, point in my ellipse, down and across, point in my ellipse, point in my ellipse. Okay, so now I have three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve points on the ellipse. So if I divided that circle up into 24 equal parts, I'd have an even more accurate ellipse. So the more points I have, the more accurate the ellipse. But for this question, that is more than enough. So I'm going to grab my lighter pencil now this time, and I'm going to go over them points and try to draw an ellipse. So just joining them points up together, 
with a light curve and you can be looking at the question here and kind of having a look and seeing okay what is this ellipse meant to look like and trying to get a nice smooth curve like that in your own drawing as well so I recommend going over it very light to start Okay, so I know right hand people will find the left side of the ellipse easier to draw and left hand people will find the right hand of the ellipse um, easier to draw. So you might have to move your, your body around the table a small bit to line up these points to try to draw the right hand side. seen out the outline of my ellipse. So I've done that very light. I get my H pencil now, so the darker pencil, and I'd be going over that ellipse just to make it stand out a bit more. So do a firm line now. Okay, so I've got my ellipse drawn now, and I should go back to my question and give it another read. So I have to find point P and Q now as well. So to find P and Q, I need to measure across 42 mil and draw a vertical line. That's going to cut at point P and point Q. So let's do that to start. So from the centre, measuring across 42 mil. And draw a vertical line that cuts through my ellipse and I will draw that with a green point point P and point Q okay so I have my two points and I need to find the tangent. So to find the tangent, first you have to find the focal points. So in class we discussed this. The focal points you need to open your compass half of the major axis. So I've taken half the major axis, which we know is 65. Go to the top of the minor axis, which is point number two in this occasion. And scribe across the major axis. So scribe once, scribe twice, that will find us two points, and we can label them points. I'm going to label them in green again. F1 and F2. Okay, to find the tangent, we're going to join F1 to the point that we're trying to find the tangent to. So that could be anywhere along the ellipse. In this occasion, they're saying it's going to be point P. And joining point P then back to F2. 
So I can do that with a construction line. But to make it a small bit easier for you guys to see, I'm going to do it with the blue spiral. Okay, so what we're after doing there now is creating an angle between F1, P and F2. So generally when we see an angle we can nearly guess what we have to do with that. We need to bisect that angle. And by bisecting this angle, we're finding the normal. So if we remember back to the circle, if we have a normal, 90 degrees to the normal on the circumference will give us a tangent. So we know that P This is the normal. Okay, and at 90 degrees to the normal, we're going to find the tangent. And that's the same on a circle as it is on an ellipse. So we know that P is on the circumference of this ellipse, so on the outside of it here. So if we find 90 degrees to this normal, we'll be able to find or tangent. And once we find our tangent, we'll be able to draw both of them and then draw the handle on our racket as well. So to find a line at 90 degrees, I'm going to set up my 45 degree set square. So the longest side, make sure it's the longest, it won't work with any other side. Longest side of my 45 degree set square with normal. My 30 60 set square is set up against it, and this is a 90 degree angle here. These are two 45 degree angles, but if I pivot it around the 90 degree angle, so the 90 degree angles after pivoting around, I'll be able to find 90 degrees to that. So re watch that part if you need to, but we should know that by now. That will find me this point here, which can then be joined back to Q because it's a symmetrical shape and P and Q are on the same perpendicular bisector of this centre line. Okay, so that's found as this. The last thing we need to do is go back to the, to the question and find out a bit more information about that handle. So I need to measure up 6 and down 6 and where it cuts the tangent here I need to measure 70 out to the left. Okay, so that should be no problem for us. Up six, down six. From where it cuts the tangent, measuring out seventy. And I can now draw in my firm lines to finish off my tennis racket.
Okay, so that's our tennis racket. Forgot one line. This one here. I was thinking as much. Okay, so that is our tennis racket now finished. Um, a lot to learn here when we're doing the tangents. Um, a small bit of a process to go through, but once you find your focal points, bisect that angle and find 90 degrees to the normal, we'll be able to find a tangent. And that works any point along that circumference. So it doesn't have to just be that point P, it can work anywhere along it. Okay, so best of luck with that question. Let me know if you have any questions on it, and I'll talk to you again next week.